So potassium metal is very reactive. One of my colleagues who used to work with it described it as evil. So um, we've, we've come out behind the chemistry department in the open air to try and do a retake of the potassium video. The last sample of potassium was very, very small, maybe 500 milligrams. It will react so reactive that if you have it in a box with argon so that it can't get oxygen from anywhere, it will take the oxygen out of paper which is paper is a compound of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and it can extract this. It's a reactive element. It's used in our body all the time. We have like lots of potassium floating around. And um, we've got some samples here, about a gram, maybe a gram and a half of each. It's a pretty big chunk of potassium, this. Really? Yeah. Very satisfying reaction. <laughs> After completing the 100 metres dash. Like sodium, it's quite a low melting point metal, and if you mix sodium with and potassium together to make so called sodium potassium amalgam, it's called NAC by those who work in the trade, NA for sodium, K for potassium. NAC is a liquid at room temperature. It looks a bit like mercury, a silvery liquid, but it's very light. And I've never played with it, but people say that if you try and drop it on the floor, it will burst into flames before it hits the floor because it reacts with the water in the air. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a potassium mirror. We'll just fish out a nice little bit of potassium. It's stored under mineral oil because it reacts with water over time. So it's quite malleable uh, stuff. It's a little bit like if you imagine cutting blue tack. Uh, it's quite soft. Uh, you start to see it. it's starting to go off a little bit already. It's tarnishing a wee bit. So we can just manipulate it like that. And then we're going to pop it into our ampule. I'm going to evacuate it now. I'm going to remove all of the atmosphere from this ampule. Okay, we've done that because the, the boiling point of potassium under one atmosphere is a, over 700 degrees C, which is pretty high. It's too high for the glass to tolerate. If I heated it up to that temperature, the glass would start to soften and melt. So by evacuating it, we remove all of the atmosphere, which is uh, keeping that boiling point as high as it is. So it lowers the boiling point much lower. So it starts to drop into the range of that of water. Okay, so we're just going to the blue flame, which is the nice hot flame. And we just keep on gently warming it. And at some point, it'll melt just enough that you'll start to see bubbles of potassium just jumping out of this thin oxide layer which is coating it at the minute and there's the mirror starting to form so the reason we do it like this is that we end up with a large surface area of potassium so it's excellent for keeping our solvents dry so what we've got now is we've got the ampule and all the way up here this is literally a mirror of very thin potassium potassium is very important our bodies contain quite a lot of potassium and it's in all sorts of biological material. If you burn um, garden rubbish in the ash that you get in the end is potassium, which is presumably why it's called potash. So as Neil quite literally wets the wall to get rid of all of that unreacted potassium. Oh, wicked. One of my colleagues who used to work with it described it as evil.